So, uh, Olympic champion, uh, two-time world champion, Helen Maroulis back uh, at Beat the Streets, Los Angeles, uh, supporting a great cause. Uh, you were supposed to compete at this against Japan, and you would hurt your hand, I believe, prior to that, and then you weren't able to compete, but you know, gave so many people an opportunity to spend time with you and support the event. You did compete a little bit after that in India, and talk about that whole experience traveling there, because it seemed like you know, rest, women's wrestling was just giant in, in India. So Yeah, absolutely. It definitely is very big in, over in India, women's wrestling. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the movie Dango, but it was yes. made after four of the Fogat sisters, um, mainly Gita and Babita, and they were both there. They both wrestled in the league. Uh, they're my friends. So to go to India and just to see their country and to see what wrestling means to them, and it's you know, such a national sport there, it was really an incredible experience. Of course, I had um, my concussion and yeah. some brain injury, so that um, yeah, affected it a little bit. But overall, the, and I think as you saw today, women's wrestling in India is growing. It's respected. They're putting the resources into it, and these women are just coming out here. They're, they're great. They have Olympic medalists, world medalists. And so they're really good to see. Yeah, I mean, it seems like for men's wrestling, the sort of international landscape changed with the breakup of the Soviet Union. We have all of these republics becoming strong, and it makes it more difficult for USA to win team medals. And on the women's side, we're seeing something similar, where all of a sudden India is a power, Nigeria is becoming a factor, China is growing all the time. But that seems far more sweet than bitter, in that it's more difficult for USA to win world championships, but women's wrestling is becoming this huge thing. Well, I don't think it's bitter at all, because I think iron sharpens iron, and we need the sure. uh, level of wrestling, and especially women's wrestling, to always grow. I think a big thing has just been respect and, and resources for women in wrestling, and so to see some countries like India, Mongolia, Kazakhstan, um, China, just uh, Nigeria, Senegal, these places that have added women's wrestling program and they're taking women from all different walks of life and they're showing up to world championships and they're competing with powerhouses like Russia and Japan and USA. It's just, it's really showing what the capabilities for women's wrestling is and, and it's just going to continue to grow. So I think to have international matches like this, um, it, it, it just, it does wonders and to really promote women's wrestling on US soil as well, I think that helps and helps to push to bring it to Division one college programs, and I just I I just see such a great future for women's wrestling um, nationally and internationally. So it's been incredible. I mean, what do you think about the story of San Fernando this year? You know, there's 750 girls programs in California, and they won. And the coach flat out said, "We wouldn't be state champions without Beat the Streets." They're offering you know training four nights a week for free, like. It just seems remarkable to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised at all that, that they would say that. I've got to not just do these events with Beat the Streets, but um, I've gotten to also work with Beat the Streets in New York and, and uh, do a little sure. bit of work with them in LA. And so, and you know, I just I presented an award to a girl that was my camper five years ago, and just to see her grow these last five years, um, and it, Beat the Streets provided that opportunity for her to go to camp, for her to go to a sleepaway wrestling camp. And for them to have resources and access and support for the coaches, for the girls, it's incredible. And I think them winning is a testament to what it does when you have that support. So the industry is an incredible organization and they're literally changing lives. And um, what do you think California is doing so successfully? Because it just seems like girls wrestling in California, you know, I think four of the ten weights for the junior world team were from California. Again, I would say respect and resources, and with respect, I, I just mean acceptance and, and opportunity. So California was one of the earliest states to have state-sanctioned women wrestling. So you have a, a state like California that's been having girls come out to middle school and high school programs for the last, you know, 10, 10 years. Gosh, even when I first got on the scene, California was, um, they had state-sanctioned wrestling. Yeah. So for them to have that and to build that depth and that growth, it's, of course, you know, now, now they're at the top. and. And I think they're setting the bar and they're setting the example to what the scene could be for women in wrestling when we have these opportunities, when we have all these schools, the rosters get filled, the competition increases, the level grows. And so, um, you know, that's why I think we're having this women's Beat the Streets match out in California. Yeah. And I think it's, it's, uh, it's no coincidence. I think it's incredible. It seems like United World Wrestling did a great thing in adding weight classes to men's and women's because it's just like 10 weights. It does, it, like, 
fewer people are just done and don't get their own success stories. And that sort of helps a lot having a bunch of weights that are sort of close. People aren't cutting drastic amounts of weight to like, how do you think that sort of helps the, the senior level uh, worlds? I think it helped tremendously. So essentially what gender parity did, in my opinion, is it allowed other, other countries or other, other governing bodies to say, you can win the same amount of gold medals in women's wrestling as you can in men's wrestling. So now let's put resources into both of them. And even when you look at a country like Russia, I remember as soon as they changed that rule, um, a lot of the coaches that were high level coaches for men transitioned and became the top women's coaches. Yeah. So, um, Urbek Verniev, you know, mm -hmm. incredible world champion, started coaching the women. And then they started producing, you know, champions and they started being this powerhouse. So, look at it. And when we have this gender equality, when we have this gender parity, we're also going to get resources we're going to get invested in. And then uh, you realize that a medal is a medal, a gold medal is a gold medal. And yeah. that's what we're looking for, you know, for our country and just for just development. So, so it's a great thing. It, it seems like the team today, you know, this might not be our world team, you know, the trials, you know, still come into play. It seems like they're doing very well, really strong. Like, what do you think about their performance and, and where our athletes, our senior level female athletes are at? I think this is one of the strongest world teams or the strongest national teams that I've ever seen and that I'm blessed to be a part of. So, uh, I. I, and, and I think it comes back to the respect and the resources. I think we've had people pouring in. We've had very generous donors in the last few years. We've been able to fund, develop camps, junior camps. We, you know, a lot of all of the girls on the scene right now have been here for seven to ten years, and they've just stayed with this program and they've just been um, developed. And now, now they're here and they have this opportunity to, to be on the scene. And, and they had opportunities for us in college. So um, I think we could have been this strong years ago had there been more college opportunities or more opportunities in gender equality and medal counts and stuff like that. But this is such a solid team, such a strong team. And they seem really close too. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and that seems to help even though, you know, the trial battles, you know, can be killing dreams. You know, yeah. keep... you know I think this is a very mature group and I think environment is key and I think when you have a common goal in mind you'll you'll just really realize what's what's important and so you get on the mat and you come into the training room and you look at someone and you realize this person's pursuing the same goal that I am and we're going to make each other better and I I respect you because I understand exactly what you want because I want the same thing and I think this team they have that morale and they've been doing tournaments consistently together world cups and great performances at world championships so they've had that time to bond and really everyone's encouraged each other and yeah, I was talking to some of my friends about this today. Like every single girl has this like signature move, and we're all teaching each other sure. our little signature moves or things that you know. It's just a solid group, like great athletes and great people. Yeah, it seems like Sarah Hildebrandt has endless varieties off that front headlock. They they, they never end. Well, yeah, Sarah's got that that headlock, that shove. You look, yeah. Ali's hitting a suplex. Um, Delty's hitting a, a trip. You know, Tamara's got this last sure. double. Adeline can turn from anything on top, and you right. know, Force is just very physical, great arm bar. I mean, it was like everyone had um, just this this great style. To yeah, their that, own that, that arm bar. You know, like <laughs> you're not used to seeing that yeah. in, in freestyle like that. It was it was really stunning, and yeah. but she was like in no danger of losing it, yeah. which, which a lot of people are when they try that in freestyle. Yeah. Um, so what do you think Team USA needs to do to get over the hump and beat Japan? I think, I think we're doing those things, and I think we have the, the strongest team that we've had in a while, so I definitely think that we're going to beat Japan this year. Um, I think it's just going to come down to peaking and, mm -hmm. and just being smart and healthy. I, I really do. I can't think of anything that I would think that the girls need to change right now. Well, thank you so much. I really thank appreciate you. it.